a book, we warmly welcome you all to the Flipside webinar series four. Uh, we have those who are streaming us through various channels here at home, overseas. We warmly welcome you all. It's a great bedtime story for those of you who are really uh, still wide awake um, so late and also joining us here online. And if you're experiencing bad weather or unsteady signals, we'd like to inform you that this session has been recorded uh, so you can watch it later because your safety is our priority. Now, a life without a book. A book actually changes a lot of a person itself. It, it really brings out um, a different stance, changes your mood, brings out a positivity, sometimes changes your mood into the negativity as well. There are pros and cons, but it also gets interesting how life drives you as well. So in order to progress, given the circumstances that we're going through right now, I think it's always better to read books. And this is why we encourage each and everyone who has joined us here live as well as online uh, to read a book, engage yourself, encourage another person to read a book, because uh, that's a good habit to follow in the years to come. And Pick a Book encourages the reading habit by getting all participants to select a book, read, research, um, and also present a summary, which also helps to hone his or her public speaking, uh, communication, and presentation skills. And by doing this, Pick a Book is not only inculcating the habit of reading, but also helps to impart wealth of knowledge. Our topic today is something that we can relate to and something we can all use with the uh, ongoing times that's going on. Uh, unleashing your fullest potential. And we're about to learn uh, lessons from three outstanding books. Today's forum will continue for one hour and we'll be joined by a fantastic set of panelists who will be joining us uh, with three uh, insights of three very valuable books. Um, now, if I can uh, quickly tell you, or do a quick introduction to my panelists today who will be um, speaking on the three books. We're joined by Shalumiel Aryo Sivam, who's also known as Shalum, who is a reader and a realtor and a member of the PAB of uh, the embassy. Um, born and bred in Candy, studied in Trinity College, uh, eldest in the family of three. He has worked at HSBC and an entrepreneur since 2010. Uh, he's a member of the Business Network International for more than four years and currently holding a position of director consultant in the Colombo Central region. Always loved interacting with people, love to give advice. He apparently gives a lot of relationship advice as well. So maybe you can, uh, you know, directly pose all those questions if you have. And uh, he has experienced a lot of life lessons and he's a fun loving guy and we're great to have him on board and he's going to talk to you today about the manual of a warrior of light by paulo colo a publisher by harper collins uh, hi shalu hi sharon thank you for that wonderful introduction great to have you with us on board um now next uh we honestly didn't plan our colors uh, for this forum, but uh, coincidentally, uh, we, we happen to wear green today because we like bright colors. It's good to wear bright colors um, with what's going on, you know, to bring more happiness to people's lives. Um, she is originally from Chennai in India, and after completing her master's in mathematics and bachelor's in education, she found her love in teaching and taught maths in Chennai for over eight years. And she's married and settled in Colombo. She runs a Mathy Coach online maths coaching platform. And she also runs her entrepreneurial venture called Z's Fragrances. An avid reader, she discovered a like-minded community in Pick a Book through Instagram, and she enjoyed the OK Association with them ever since. Great to have a, a, a co-partner alongside to join the forum. Zainab Yusuf, reader Thank and you. Thank teacher, you, also a member of the PAB Home Tree as well. Now, my next panelist is a medical doctor by training and a human resource developer by practice. He holds an MBA in human resource management and an MSc in business psychology. Uh, at present, he's the director HR at China Harboring Engineering and the lead consultant uh, or at Prabhat Karnanayaka Associates. He's passionately working towards building capacity of youth and young adults. And through his flagship program, Leaders of Tomorrow, he shares the messages of personal leadership and life success. Very honored to have with us the member of the PAB, The Office, Dr. Prabhat Karnanayaka, reader and trainer. Thank you, Good evening, Dr. Thank you. Good evening, Dr. Right, now back to the topic, unleash your potential. Now, a lot of them 
all of us are gift, gifted with many talents um, that some of us perceive them. Some of us have our moods and variations that we go ups and downs in life. And whenever there is a, an obstacle, we think twice, do we have to do this? Sometimes the friends that you associate can really, really bring you down. And also sometimes it's the way you move. And that's where a book actually brings in a lot of positivity. And we're going to find out as to what these three books are going to have offer. So I'm going to start with the three panelists to give us a quick outlook on the three books. Uh, while we also say hello to all our viewers who have just joined in, uh, you can raise your hand, you can throw in your questions, you can do anything you want uh, in the chat box. Um, Shalu, I will let you start. Thank you, Sharon. Well, the book is Manual of the Warrior of the Light. Well, as it says, it's, it's a manual. It's, it starts with a boy who just wants to, um, he's looking for a belt. He sees a beautiful woman and it starts with a nice, like, nice, nice story. <clears throat> and then he looks for a bell and then he, he can't find it and he notices so many other things. And the author depicts it in a certain way that he calls it the warrior of light so that every attribute of every person is depicted in this book. So you can't, it's not, it's not in chapters. It's, it's an amazing book to read. I mean, to talk about the book, I might need about two days at a stretch, but I'm trying to keep it as small as possible. So just, it's, it's about us. The book is basically about us. Right. And uh, Zainab, if you can take us through. Uh, yes. Uh, so in the book Blink, Malcolm Gladwell is talking about Blink exactly, just uh, uh, thinking fast, uh, thinking quick, and at that same time, the thoughts that you process have to make sense and uh, be fruitful in terms of decision making. So uh, as we move forward, I'll give you more information, and I think they'll love it. It's, it's a wonderful book. OK. And Dr. Prabhat? Yeah, the uh, book I'm going to share with you today is uh, called Confidence by Norman Vincent Peale, the author of uh, Power of Positive Thinking. Uh, this is now uh, the, the premise is that when we want to achieve something, whether we have all the talent, all the resources, everything available to us, just one factor will make the difference. That is the confidence. So if you have confidence, you can convert all these the, the, the prerequisites into results. So the, whole, the entire book is about how to build confidence from different perspectives. That's about what the book is all about. And uh, we'd like to quickly ask our viewers who are watching us from the attendees, how positive is everyone? How uh, confident are you uh, given the situation, given the circumstance? Um, because it's tough times, isn't it? Everyone will probably look at another person. The first two weeks, it was, it was hard. Uh, everyone is like, you know, like a headless chicken running about trying to figure out how do we sort this out? Are we under lockdown? How is that country doing? How is this country doing? That's, that's how it was. And then now we've sort of resolved to the situation on facing, but we ourselves have to bring in that confidence to each and every person. So I'm going to start with the real warrior now uh, by throwing the first question to you. Uh, Shalom, who is the warrior in light? Any, any pre-qualifications that you can share with us on the book? Well, the warrior is the you and me, Sharon. It's everybody, right? And the, the book says the warrior of light is the light inside you. Every person has their own light, right? And to become a warrior, you don't have to go for training. You don't have to, you don't have to be educated. You don't have to be a strong man. You don't have to be anything that the person would depict a successful person to be. Right, a warrior is a person is in every walks of life, in every type of person, in every personalities. This book book has addressed to everybody, right? So, if you take every page by page, it's something that shows us today what I'm doing, this moment what I'm doing, next moment what I'm doing. So it's an amazing thing. So. For, for me to say who is the warrior of life, it's just all of us. Every person in your life, every person that you come across, every person in your past, your memories, your present, your future, it all concises as the warrior of light and how this light should shine through you so that your life can be in a different level. Shalu, 
there is always this uh, issue where anger plays in. And, you know, when you're a warrior, it's even more. Like, you know, you really bring out the real lion inside you. Uh, how does that book explain in, in, in a simple term like that? See, when you call a warrior, Sharon, it's not the fighter that you think about, hmm. right? It is actually the battle that you and I face on a day-to-day -day basis. Hmm. So it's like, it's your thought. It's your thought that, that you battle with. Now, for example, let's say, I, if I want to say hello to you, you must be pondering. I, I'll be saying, okay, should I say hello or should I not say hello? So that I'm not going to say hello to strangers. <laughs> There's always two voices, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. it's the battle that you have with yourself is known to be a warrior. That's why I said in uh, previously, you don't any type. So it's not your education. It's not what you are. It's not how strong you are. It's just it says how you deal with your thoughts on a day to day basis, hmm. right? right? So that will help you to be in a different level. I keep right. on saying a different level. <laughs> That's okay. We, we can start a, from a different level as well. I'm going to cross over to Zainab now on uh, the blink. Uh, what is the author's intention of writing this book? What is Malcolm actually trying to say or trying to convey to us? So in this book, Blink, Malcolm Gladwell's intention was that uh, we're all capable of making quick decisions or taking snap judgments. Uh, and those quick decisions can be advantageous to us and they can be disadvantageous to us. So three things he's trying to convey to us. The first is that uh, we all make quick decisions all the time. We're all thin slicing. When we, he calls it thin slicing. We all thin slice all the time. We make snap judgments. Okay, and... Uh, the second thing he's trying to convey is these quick decisions that we make all the time. Okay, they can be beneficial to us as well as harmful. So we must be very wary of them. How, how are the decisions going to affect us? And the third thing he's trying to tell us that if the decisions can be harmful, we can take steps to control and educate our decisions. It might seem very weird. How can you control a decision? But yes, you can train yourself to take quick decisions that are very careful, educated, and advantageous to, to us, or to all of us. Those are the three important points that he's trying to convey. Zainab, you said something about snapping. Now, um, I must admit, uh, I just snap at times. It also happens with the occasion. And, uh, you know, if someone comes and cr crashes into your car, you just want to get on with it and take on that anger with that person. But when before you snap at someone, is the book giving a tip on think twice before you snap before? Or what kind of a tip does the book say? So uh, this snapping is actually the author is talking about snap judgments over judgment. there. That is make, yeah. 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 Not the snapping in the literal sense that we come across in everyday life. Okay. So it's the okay. snap judgment that is uh, quick decision making. Okay. Now, uh, thin slicing, he defines thin slicing as you arrive at a decision, okay, but real fast with minimum, minimal analysis and with less resources. Generally, when you take a decision, uh, you consider what are the uh, outcomes, the circumstances, how will it affect you, how will it affect your family yeah. or your surrounding. But in thin slicing, you make quick decisions, snap judgments. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now, uh, how do we do this is we have a, a, a subconscious mind. It's a locked door inside behind. And uh, it takes things from the environment. And it's very good at recognizing patterns and uh, making connections out of it. So this subconscious mind, uh, whenever it's presented with something stressful or something difficult or a new situation, it starts working uh, behind the locked door and it sends signals to us indirectly that uh, and those signals tell you uh, or help you make a decision for example just to make it simpler uh, if you see a truck approaching right you're not going to sit and analyze okay what am i supposed to do in which direction you're going to think quick so your subconscious mind knows that when a truck comes it's harmful you're going to you're going to die you're going to get killed so it sends signals, your heartbeat raises, uh, you get, you, you become sweaty, you're, you feel stressful. So that indirect signals helps you to take a decision that you have to get out of the way. 
Right. So that's thin slicing, making uh, sense of the situation with very little information and correctly. Right. And the authors uh, told a very interesting point here that um, the subconscious mind, it can start kicking in and it can take a decision in 10 seconds. Whereas the conscious mind needs 80 seconds to process information and make sense of the situation. The subconscious mind is really fast. And uh, there's, a, there's a psychologist called Gottman. Uh, he can just listen to a snippet of a conversation between couples and he can predict the success rate of the marriage. And how long is the snippet? And he can listen to a couple speaking for say five minutes. And he can predict whether the uh, couple is going to be living happily ever after or they need to go find lawyers. So thin slicing is, uh, that's thin slicing, right? How can you listen to for five minutes and come to such an important decision about a, about a success of a marriage? Yeah, but it's yeah. possible. All right. Uh, we're going to come back to you, Zainab, and ask you more about um, the deciding factor on right and wrong and decisions and uh, various other details as well. But I'm going to go on to Die Empty uh, by Todd Henry uh, on confidence can be defined in many ways. And how do you see um, Henry doing it, uh, Dr. Prabhat? Uh, Sharon, a small correction. The book is Confidence by Norman Vincent Peale. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yes. Now, uh, first of all, uh, anyone who has read Peale would know that all of his writings have a Christian perspective because he is a Christian pastor. He is considered as one of the most skilled Christian communicators in the, of the 20th century. But his ideas are universal. Those ideas can be applicable to anyone with any belief system. I, I want to uh, share that with the audience. So, confidence. Now, if you go to the dictionary, you can find very uh, technical uh, definitions, but uh, it's a word that all of us use often, but many of us barely think about it. To this, uh, to uh, define it, we don't take that much effort. But the author has described uh, confidence as a combination of three things. Thinking big, believing big, and achieving big. That is confidence as the author describes. Now, uh, in the book, uh, uh, how he describes it is, uh, confidence is all about believing that problems do have answers and believing you can solve them. If you think there is no solution, you will not worry about finding the solution, will you? So believing that there's a solution and that you can find that solution is having confidence. So don't sit around and wait, wail and whine and moan and complain that you are weak, inadequate or inferior because uh, that is not true at all. Except only that the, the, the insights uh, you have that you think, okay, I might be weak, I might be inadequate. But say to yourself, I believe in myself. And then begin to grow and then you will have power. And also, uh, if you believe that you can achieve something, you are being an asset to yourself. Why? Because you are providing yourself with plenty of resources to achieve what you want to achieve. But on the other hand, if you believe that you cannot achieve it, you are being a liability to yourself. Then you are going against all the confidence that you might have. You are basically pulling all the resources out and therefore draining yourself of any chances of achieving. So in short, confidence is believing in yourself. And Dr. Prabhat now, this whole belief um, has to start within, but that whole confidence of, you know, let's take waking up in the morning every day and having that confidence. Okay, you have a positive message coming and somebody will talk to you uh, with a lot of energy, a lot of vibrance, a lot of happy moods. And somebody will come and bring a full financial topic early morning. Uh, we need to pay up that, we need to pay up this. That just drains your entire confidence level. And I know we need to read the book to build up, but how do we quickly swap ourselves and you know move on with the situation by just like that? Well, yes, so uh, according to uh, Peel, the, the whole 
the secret is being able to see things in perspective. Because now, okay, as you said, uh, you might be faced with a financial issue at the as the first thing in the morning. So then you think, okay, what I'm going to do? My whole day is going to be over. However, uh, what he advises here is to have a very strong belief about yourself. Uh, uh, because again, it's coming from a religious uh, kind of uh, thinking, but uh, we, 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 even if you leave, leave out that concept, because when you believe in yourself, that uh, uh, the, the same thing which is uh, conveyed in the book, The Secret, when you have a positive energy, which is going out from you, you will attract positivity. So the whole thing is believing in yourself. Maybe you are in the in a rut and you think, okay, I can't get over this. This is the end of my life. However, have that little uh, light in your mind, always thinking, yes, this is positive. This is possible. I can do this. This will happen. Then when you have, when you have that belief, automatically you will attract all the positivities and all the solutions which will take you forward. Uh, to our viewers, you're probably wondering, we look like traffic lights today. We're only either green or we're red. It's, it's, it's a complete yes or no go. There is no amber, uh, but uh, it's very positive messages that we're talking on very uh, subjective and timely topics. Um, there is some interesting questions coming from our viewers who are our attendees uh, here. Uh, Sachin, uh, Sachin Semage says, in the book Talking to Strangers by Gladwell, he talks how inaccurate we are in judging people depending on the way they talk and behave. But on the blink, you said, we can make a snap judgment without even thinking. Is it contradiction or is there a broader meaning? So um, we, it's uh, as uh, I told that we make snap judgments, we're capable of them, mm. but whether they are right or wrong, whether they prove beneficial or detrimental depends on how, on your past experiences. So when I, when, uh, if I can get a chance to uh, explain thin slicing, I can, you know, touch upon this topic also. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So I'm going to go back to uh, Shelun now and ask him this question. Um, based on the book that's written, would you say that there are multiple messages or a common message uh, in terms of emotions and reactions to uh, one person? Shelun, it is... Uh... It's a common message for multiple situations, right? And uh, how we to face life as it is. I'll take your previous question about payments. That is the common question everybody has. See, when doctor said like, we need to have the confidence. And in this book, it says that the warrior of light is of faith, right? There is a there is one one section that talks about he always he uses the sword, but he always goes back and thinks like, what type of an armor should I wear, right? People would say you wear the breastplate. People would say you carry the shield, but he doesn't listen to anybody. He just goes and he takes the cloak of faith, right? The moment you have faith, the moment you have faith, you can face any situations. So every situation here, I would like to point out, uh, there are two things that I like to point out is like when you face a situation over and over again, right? That is something we, that's where we get frustrated. We think, why, why am I facing this situation again and again and again? If I, if I had to pay my bills last month, why is it coming again? Why can't I have the enough, enough funds to pay this month? Right? So that situation comes over and over again. It's, it's because the warrior of light realizes, I mean, when you, when you, when you are the warrior of right, when you sit back and meditate, you realize that situation is there for you to pass it. How you pass it? To stay calm. This situation, you have to stay calm. You have to stay, take a step back. Why am I in this situation? Right? And you, low hand be roll, you will get the answer. There will be, there will be situations because the warrior of light, again, it says he's prepared. He always improves, he improves his talents. He, he knows what he needs to be done, right? And one of the greatest saying that I got from this book is, the warrior of light is full of gratitude, Sharon. 
and in this situation if when we are at home i know as you said first two first week even i was very worried that i didn't know what i was going to do right because end of the day it's 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 the fear right and the moment i start becoming gratitude i got more new opportunities to do my business and i i was successful in my business for the past two months right i actually made money right so when you have gratitude things will fall, fall into place so this as i said this just one com- this common message in so many different situation right so and it's for people who crosses your path the people who comes in your life your family your family so it so many things that this book talks about um and i yeah. think uh, when we come back we'll speak a little bit about emotions because um the levels of anxiety today and depression has gone up and a lot of them do keep talking about we're going to come out as crazy people uh being stuck at home we're also hearing stories about violence at home um so many people at police stations etc i mean if you're watching the news you know all these facts uh but it's that little calmness at home because this is a time where i think a lot of people have enjoyed ramazan have enjoyed their aurudu celebrations have enjoyed uh, what poson is going to take place they've yeah. never had that uh, it's like once upon a time we've got our families together and that whole thing has happened again we yeah. make things at home we're going to yeah. have so many bakers and you know people to eat people yeah. are going to put on weight but uh, on a positive side it has brought a lot of smiles to a lot of people um during this time so yeah when i come back i'm going to talk to you on uh, anxiety or whether there is a solution for the emotions uh, but i'm going to go to uh, zainab now what does your gut feeling say what is right and wrong is it important to think to come to a decision because sometimes you know we don't have a uh, time for that i agree with you this little signal has to work for us to take a decision but what does the book tell it, tell us on that so um i would yeah i would first like to say that i really enjoyed my ramzan at home this time like you said uh, it was different it was with family it was close knit uh now coming back to snap or uh, judgments and thin slicing and quick decisions it is really important to think and then reach a decision so how are how how is the subconscious mind working so now the subconscious mind does not think at that time uh whenever we are in any environment whatever is happening around us the subconscious mind picks up in hints it picks up cues and keeps storing it like for example if it says that uh when a car comes and if somebody is standing in the way that person is going to get run over so that is stored so the next time the truck comes you know what is going to happen you don't have to think what 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 needs to happen you know that something really detrimental is going to happen so the subconscious mind keeps on storing information all the time and what information is fed inside is the type of decision that will come outside so you need to be really this is called priming what you put inside your mind all the time is called priming whether you put it consciously or unconsciously mm-hmm. the way we are primed is the way we reach a decision mm-hmm. subconscious mind reaches decisions like that uh and whenever a decision has to be made uh, whatever we are going through everything all day all night what we see it starts acting up it starts playing up behind the locked door and uh, it comes outside and it gives the signals and helps us make a decision so the thin slicing works how through the past experiences through how you've lived all these years so you know um a lot of people have gossip and that uh, that's a very challenge you know sometimes these gossips can be very interesting sometimes it feeds way too much of information that you don't know what to pick um and that destroys your mind does the book give us any insights on that uh so the uh, the book tells that you have to be very careful about what you put inside your mind because you need to be aware that you are make, making quick decisions you're thin slicing all the time you need to be aware of that so uh even when you're gossiping or when you when you're reading things you need to know what you need to take in you need to have your priorities right what to take in what to not take in uh the book doesn't talk on gossip uh in particular but 
the, uh, the book does talk about a lot of negative issues that are happening and how thin slicing uh, can, you know, uh, make us give a decision or reach a decision that might not be very favorable. Right. Um, I'm going to come back to you, Zainab, and talk right. about the subconscious mind in a very detailed length. But I'm going to cross over to uh, Dr. Prabhat now. Um, Dr. Prabhat, you said confidence depends on um, the asset, the liability. If you can elaborate on that, because um, it's tough, isn't it? Um, to always put on a, you know, a complete facade to show how you are and then inside be a completely different person, probably after a meal, a very happy person, but before that cranky, moody, all of that. Um, how, how does this work? Uh, Dr. Prabhat, you're mute, on mute. So uh, the author uses a, a beautiful concept called whether you are an asset or a liability to yourself. Mm. So what does that mean? Now, he asks, are you helping yourself to live a good life or are you constantly hampering yourself, getting in your own way? So that is whether you're going to be an asset or a liability. So because this is a very serious question because people often are their own worst enemies. That is, uh, if you stop to count how many times in your life you have frustrated yourself, it will give you a lot of food for thought. Now, how many times have you defeated yourself, tripped yourself? If anybody else did that to you, what will you do? You, I mean, you will name them as your worst enemies, wouldn't you? But we, without our knowledge, on numerous occasions, we hinder our own growth. So uh, what uh, the author asks us to question deeply is whether you are an asset or a liability. Now, um, because our problems are not anybody else primarily. Our problem is ourselves. Okay, we might get some uh, problems from others and the, the, the saying is that the whole ocean of water cannot sink a ship unless you allow the water to come in. So you have the responsibility. So the, you can start by asking yourself the question, am I being a liability for my own success? Now, if I were to uh, elaborate on that aspect, like being a liability and uh, uh, restricting your own growth, uh, let me give you a small exercise. Now, after this session, sit down and ask yourself, what is my greatest weakness, my greatest fault? Do you know what it is? Or has your mind blocked it out? So you do not know what your chief weakness is because our mind is all tends always to rationalize things for our own protection, of course, to provide relief from the anxiety of having to face this demon. So we don't see our weaknesses. Then what happens? Our weaknesses grow into a liability which will prevent us from reaching the, the things that we can and should achieve. When you really start evaluating, you will know what your chief weakness is. And if you know what it is, and if you want this liability to be removed, it can be. Now, the, the best uh, uh, way of uh, looking at it is if, if, if you take an uh, iron bar and if it is broken, and if you weld it properly, the next time it will not break at the point where it was welded. It will break from somewhere else because you can be the strongest in your weakest place. So you have to think about yourself, whether you are being an asset to yourself to give the confidence to go forward and achieve something or whether you are being a liability which will pull you back from achieving the great things, beautiful things that you can achieve. Shara? Doctor, now a lot of people would be like, I'm this awesome asset and I've got a lot of um, talents. I, I do a lot of things. But then when it comes to multitasking, it goes for a six. How, how do we segregate this and, you know, organize ourselves properly? Now, if, if I take a quick question, before the lockdown, everyone is was on this crazy rat race. Um, it, it, 
like no time, always tuition and da da da. I I I, I do apologize. The online teachers are having a hard time now, uh, uh, going on constantly being or teaching uh, all the students online. But there is a standard where they say it's nice to teach the children and be at home. So where do we circle ourselves in the level of confidence? Because it keeps fluctuating, isn't it? Yes, now uh, let me take the first uh, segment of the question which you raised about multitasking. Now, if you really look at the neuroscience, this is not, not from the book, just uh, from uh, some other uh, subject area. But it's, what neuroscience says is you practically can't multitask. What you're doing is you are quickly changing between things uh, yeah. into a short duration. You can't do two things at the same time. So you do this for a, multi, uh, a millisecond, you change over to the other one. That's basically what multitasking is. So the, the, the reality is when you add uh, more um, uh, multiple tasks on top of each other, the efficiency of all of those things would fall. So the best thing is focus, complete that, remove it, then go for the next one about that. So that's about the multitasking and about this, the, the whole thing about how to, uh, the, how yeah. confidence links to yeah. the, the balance of these things. And uh, basically, um, uh, if you take the example of education, uh, I've even written a LinkedIn article on that. That is, we see education uh, the wrong way because education is not only the academic education. So we can use this lockdown to teach our lot of a uh, lot of these life skills to our kids, which will give them enormous levels of confidence. Maybe, as you said earlier, maybe do some baking, maybe uh, some other things, gardening. So those things will the life skills will give them way more confidence than the academics, uh, academic uh, things can do because academic things are targeted to the exam. Okay, you pass the exam, fine. But you won't carry that confidence to your life. But life skills, which you can definitely do during this lockdown, will add a lot to your confidence. I think next time when I eat and text someone, I'll be concentrating on this. <laughs> which one should I do first? Or which one should I yes. do next? Uh, um, uh, Shelu, there is a question for you, and that is, is there a moment in your life which you could share when, you're, when you first had this aha moment, when you took a step back and saw uh, your solution? Um, Gokla Arya Lingam, thank you very much for sending in that question. Shelu? Thank you, Gokla, for the question. He, um, well, there are so many moments in my life from the time I was schooling and up to now. But I would remember two specific occasions. That is when my uh, when my elder daughter was born. When I first first saw that moment, the moment she was born, everything was worth it. Up until then, the struggle, everything was worth it, right? So, what I learned there, there was anything is possible as long as you're patient, right? So that was a really aha moment for me. And the next one is during this COVID times. As I said, the first week I was like, I didn't know what, what's going on. I was like in a, in a moment as if, is my family going to stop, literally? I, I, didn't, I didn't know what I was going to do, right? But the moment I just took a step back, I just sat and I, I just let go. I said, I, even if I stand on my head, I can't do anything else because everything is under lockdown. You cannot possibly think of any solution. So the only thing I did was I just said, God, you take over. I can't do this. And I just let go. At that moment, the opportunities that I got created for me, I actually started a new business entirely out of my, out of my uh, forte. It's completely new to me. And I was successful for the past two months and it is continuing. So that's, that's, that is my moment, I would say, when you actually step, stay, take a step back and let go and then let the universe handle it, you're in for a ball. Has the book connected to this little idea that recently helped you? Well, I read the book after. <laughs> 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 but see, this the book talks in so many places like that. The warrior, when he goes for the battle, right? He, he goes in one, one force and then he realizes, I can keep on persevering. But I might lose this battle. So he takes a step back. He takes a moment. He re-strategizes. He waits for the correct moment and then goes into battle again. 
what it shows is like you cannot do everything the way your mind processes you have to let let the subconscious take over the moment you let it take over because what i believe is your subconscious is really con con connected to the universe because that is one thing that you are not in control of right the more because and if you see even now when i am talking to you there must be about million thoughts that is going through your head you have no control over it the yeah. only thing you can control is how you react based on that thought yeah so, so the that's the book says you take take a step back just calm yourself down and the light in you will really shine and uh shallo now with this period uh, in relation to the book there are different emotions that it speaks um if we have to elaborate the reactions which affected you or what made you feel most which is relevant to you because uh, a lot of people we meet tell us they have anxiety shocks um like a different feeling and you know you go through this a uh, real rush where you want an answer you want to react and that it, things that never was in your body just started reacting in a very different way number one could be anger also i don't know why it's all with a's anger anxiety mm -hmm. uh, uh arrogance <laughs> all of this uh, <laughs> but uh, in relation to the book how how does this uh, sort of bring out a message yeah. i'm glad you asked that question sharan uh see i believe there are two two types of emotion that rules everything right that is the root cause of everything that you that you uh, come across in your life you can you can think about it you can meditate meditate on it and see which is fear and love these are the only two emotion that controls everything see if you take a person who is angry a person who is anxious a person who is arrogant the root cause of that emotion is fear he is scared he is going to lose something yeah right he is arrogant because he is scared he is going to lose his position so he wants to defend his position in some way so that he is putting that block in front of him he or she is putting the block in front of them so when you have fear your entire system goes wonky you take bad decisions you talk in you talk arrogantly right because it's a defense mechanism that's when when your system is detecting a threat when there is fear you detect a threat because you are you are a primal being right so you are like an animal deep within inside so you are ready to ready to attack the fear you are ready to attack that unknown enemy in front of you so you are you are in that state the moment you have love it's it's completely the opposite see there is a, that is a religious book i i'm 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 coming from a christian background so this was really uh, i'm not promoting religion here but this is a very uh, general term that will help in every 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 person when there is perfect love there is no fear right so this is something which i always work which i always think about right when when there because love is an ultimate power mm. the ultimate power which helps you to get out of every single fear out of you the moment you do that you're perfectly a calm human being you're not a perfect human being you're a calm human being because you cannot be perfect because of the thoughts and every information that keeps on coming inside you how you handle it is through that unconditional love when i say love it's not just going hugging somebody not being lovey dovey it's it's, it's a it's it's a it's a it's a power it's how you yeah. gratitude how you, giving you would give in yeah. and it's yeah. it's a whole new it's it's divine to be honest mm. so that's that's what is the basic emotions that, that to answer to the to your questions uh, i'm going to come back uh, because the, one of the challenging tasks that we've seen through a lot of people is that they've lost jobs and we know that this is a status which feared a lot of people um, some of them are very angry about it some of them are very disappointed they're broken if they have taken loans this is really really something that's crushing them down so maybe when i come back we can elaborate uh how to bring the warrior back to life uh but i'm going to go back to uh the blink now before i blink um uh, zainab can you elaborate uh more on um the subconscious mind the significant influence on our thinking without us being 
aware about it? How, how do we sort of, not that we can concentrate, but how do we see it in a, diff, uh, uh, in a lengthy way? Right, so, uh, it's, uh, now I, I was uh, fully into Shailu's conversation. It's all going into my head. Now I have to come back to Blink. What's coming yeah. all the way now? <laughs> you know, it's, it's doctors' conversations also going on in my subconscious <laughs> mind now. Now, so uh, uh, how the subconscious mind works is, I, as I told earlier, it picks on cues from the environment and keeps storing it inside. And this is called priming. How are we prime? We listen to our parents at home. Those conversations are in our head through the social media, through the news we watch, through, the, through what our friends do, through what the politicians do, through, uh, through the movies we watch. Constantly information is being there. It's, it's, it's getting stored every day, all day. Uh, so this, this information that's stored behind, okay, is, uh, this is called priming. Because what priming does is it, it drills your thoughts or it takes your thoughts in a particular direction. So uh, just to show uh, how it's going to affect us is uh, if in my house, just as an example, out of the, out of the book, we constantly talk about the color or a significance of a facial color or bodily color of a human being. Tomorrow, if another person of color is going to come in front of me, I'm going to be very prejudiced against them. That's called priming. So priming is what you put in your head directly, consciously, or unconsciously. So whatever is happening, the books you read, you're consciously making an effort to read a particular book. That's affecting your thoughts. The kind of people you meet, the kind of circle you have. So all that has an impact on your subconscious mind. And when you have to make a quick decision, uh, a snap judgment, all that comes into play. Now the example is uh, we often consider women uh, to uh, to be of uh, to take household duties, and we expect men are going to be the breadwinners. So, and we often associate associate jobs, certain jobs with men, certain jobs with women. So, if you're in the interview panel, and if you're, if you're not uh, conditioned towards having a women employee, a female employee. If she's going to walk in, you're thin, you're going to thin slice and like, okay, I didn't want her. That will show in your facial expression. So you have actually um, thin slice, you've made a snap judgment based on your past experience, based on your thinking, based on your priming. And that facial expression is definitely, definitely going to be seen by that candidate. And that's going to, you know, it, it's going to be a circle. It, that, that negative uh, cues are going to be picked up. She's going to feel uncomfortable. The same thing like, you know, you know, George Floyd, it's like going around right now about how he was uh, subject to humiliation, subject to death because of his color. So uh, all that happens because of priming. We have we grown in an environment where we think that if somebody is of African-American background, and this the author talks in the book also, that how in the U.S. often African-Americans are subject to uh, discrimination. He said that uh, there was a test and African-Americans who are just asked to mention their race, that race, what race do you belong to? Just mentioning that race had such an effect on them that they were not able to do the test properly. So uh, that, that one word called race has primed in their mind and all that they've been seeing uh, all through the years about how race has uh, held my, uh, my community backward comes into play. And uh, you make the wrong, de wrong decisions are made. So that's how priming works. Priming is what you keep taking in all day, all long, every day, consciously or unconsciously, and that affects your decision making. Whether it is with a minority community or whether it is with respect to a, a race or a religion, it has negative influence. It can even be as a marketer to a sale, like you're, you're a marketer, you want to sell something. But in your environment, in your circle, uh, people with this particular uh, income are not capable of buying. So you, you don't even go to them. So you have, you have made a judgment, a quick judgment based on somebody's income without even knowing, without even making an offer to buy or to sell. And um, I was going to ask you this question now. Um, there is a lot of people who share good positive insights, uh, sharing, caring, and all of that. If I ask you what was your favorite part in the book, um, something that touched you and um, sort of thought like a reinvention, this is what it is. Um, 
what the book really helped me do is it uh, it gave me a new perspective so i became aware of how judgmental i was uh, you know with a lot of things because i i i am i know by nature it's my blind spot i can be very judgmental i can make quick decisions yeah we all do we all do uh, and you know as the women in i don't know i'm i'm, I'm not putting my uh, uh, the community down but then we quick to judge what the other person i was very quick to judge what the other person is wearing and why are they wearing this why are, so what bling did was it made me think that i am making a decision how why am i making it so ha, have i been constantly you know reading books or am i in the community of people who make who judge other people like this do i need to you know rethink about my circle or what i read or what i watch is my instagram affecting my thinking because in there's so much on social media we keep reading all day so is that affecting so i was it 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 gave perspective to me i i started thinking i should okay uh what i'm going to read is definitely going to come out of my mouth uh, whether i like it or not you know when there's a quick decision to be made so i need to be really careful about what goes inside and be and and another thing i really have started doing is uh, when i am in an uncomfortable situation when somebody else is in an uncomfortable situation and i am with them uh, i make it a point to you know just lock all the preconceived notions and okay that is another human being uh, it happens to her it can happen to me also so uh, okay what is the best thing to do before i you know quickly jump to a decision I, I I make sure that I I am aware and I so take pause. A, you you take a I break pause. and think about it yeah. because these are the pauses that will later help me to make a positive quick decision. Mm-hmm. So today, if I am uh, more welcoming towards uh, say another person of color, say I don't like people who wear red at all. Yeah. So what I do is I constantly keep myself in pe- uh, in company of people who wear red. and i keep thinking positively about it no oh my god he's wearing red but look at his intelligence he's wearing red but he's so smart he's wearing red but he's so genuine so next time when somebody who's wearing red comes in front of me my automatic quick decision would be no this is a good person yeah so though you're making a quick decision it has happened because of my priming and i think by reading books it also helps us respect an individual from no matter whatever the backgrounds they come from we respect whatever the religion they believe um and it's that little gratitude that has to be um see when when someone calls uh, it's like hello or you want to say hello or yeah. do you want to say hello and you know it's it's that little the tone that really gets you going and then you keep thinking okay what's this is this a i mean the whole emotion works according to it isn't it uh that we have to be careful so i think i believe most of these books that we're reading would definitely give us good insights on uh, looking at a very broader perspective think of a new innovation be a new person uh smile a little bring more joy and also respect uh people out there no matter uh where they're from what they're doing or however they are cuz we are all human end of the day we all do mistakes um we should we should appreciate who we are and we should appreciate the other people as well now being confident with all of that and also having the point of identifying your weakness and then also scaling down and then thinking okay no weaknesses i can manage myself but how do you, how do we stand up to to a tough situation with confidence um sometimes um we have this strong caliber of inside we are we are you know confident but we can't just put it out there how, how do we manage that yeah uh, let me uh, uh go to a uh, verse that the author has referred in the book which says uh, commit thy way unto the lord trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass so if i were to uh, put it into a more modern language and it means is sort of Uh, don't struggle so hard don't get yourself worked up don't fill your life with tension mm-hmm. do the best you can with the situation and let the the the, the force uh, take it uh, take you forward so uh, and in the book uh, there are about four or five things uh, which he specifically mentions uh, to how to tackle this uh, tough situations and how to move forward first is 
uh, when you face a tough situation, uh, say to yourself, this is the first day of the rest of my life. I'm going to get going and I'm going to uh, do it good. I have the power to handle this tough situation. So when that the, the difficulty comes, right, okay, you forget the past and you take a brand new start. You say, okay, this is the first day of the rest of my life. I'm going to do, I'm going to face this. I'm going to do this right. That is the first advice he gives. Second, uh, what you've got to do once in a while is to stand up and remember who you are. Okay, you would have had your uh, difficult times, you have been defeated, you have had tough times, but you are a man, you are a woman. You are not a worm or you are, you are not a weakling. So don't be pushed around by the situation. Don't be a doormat to all the others to uh, stride on. Start pushing the situations around rather than being pushed by the situation. That is what the second thing what he says. Third one is, uh, don't fall into the trap of being influenced by people who will tell you that you must face the facts. Face the facts. For example, say now with the lockdown, uh, someone who is in, say in their 50s loses the job. Then what will the best friend say? Now you are in your 50s and even the, the openings are limited. Let's face the facts. This is hopeless. So there'll be now say again, maybe a couple who is uh, fighting, who's having disagreements. The, the best friend would say, yes, now you're having all these problems. So uh, th there might be no solution for this. Let's face the facts. Now, there'll be enough people to tell you to face the facts. Yes, obviously the facts are important. But don't be overwhelmed by them because the facts can and do change. Because I, I recently saw a, a news item where a person who has been uh, sent to prison has been released after 37 years with DNA evidence that he was not the person who did that crime. So facts will change. So if you say, let's face the facts and uh, live our, all our lives based on that, we are going to be uh, losing a lot. And final advice the book gives is to think big and believe big. The bigger you believe, the bigger your results are. Now tell me, do you want to have small little, little results? I can tell you how to do it. You think little, believe little, and you will get little results. But if you want to have big, humongous results, then you better start thinking big. And again, uh, there's a nice story from the scriptures he uh, puts in the in the book, a story uh, about this man called uh, Elisha, who had this uh, disciple who passed away, and his wife didn't have any any uh, income to uh, sustain her, herself and her family. So she came to Elisha, and um, uh, he said, okay, uh, do you have anything which has value? She said, yes, I have this small bottle of uh, valuable oil. Small bottle, it's, but it's valuable. Then what Elisha said was, okay, you go around the neighborhood and collect as many vessels as you can, empty vessels, and bring them to your house, and I'll tell you what to do. Then uh, the woman was not that much of a believer. She collected few vessels and brought it home. Then uh, Elisha came and she said, okay, now you take your uh, bo uh, the small bottle of oil and start pouring it into these vessels. And it the oil came uh, kept on coming until it filled the vessels that she has collected. So the, the, the moral of the story is that I mean, uh, uh, if she had more vessels, she would have had more oil. So the moral of the story is our thoughts are vessels. Our ideas are vessels. And our dreams are vessels. And depending on how big we make the vessel, you will have limited resources to fill the vessel. So the, the, those are the four advices he specifically gives how to face this tough situation and keep going. Over to you. Uh, doctor, now uh, we've got a fantastic question here and uh, I'd like to take this question quickly. Um, it says about, um, how do you look at things in a positive manner when your environment has a toxic person or persons that you have to face? Um, 
I think that's a very important question because uh, there are a few people who in fact messaged me saying, uh, I'm very bored. I don't know how, what to do. I'm going crazy. So when I elaborated saying seven to eight, I take my dog for a walk, 8.30 to 12.30, I work on the laptop and office work, 12.30, 1.30, I watch news and I eat food. And then, you know, Skype calls and then I go for a walk, I do yoga, I do all of this and then spend time, talk to the parents, da, da, da. And then they're like, oh, we can do all this stuff, can we? I'm like, yeah, of course. Like if you segregate your time, watch a movie, make use of it. It's not about sitting full time, but then there could be a screaming child and the mother is in the kitchen or the child might constantly say, I may, just made breakfast here. And then the next round, the child might say, I'm hungry again, uh, which is a, a very common factor that we hear. But when we have a toxic person in that environment who comes in and brings in a negativity, let's take a very common example, like the husband with the angry face who has lost his job. And then the wife who has to cook for the kids who constantly cries and says, how do we handle this? How do we do that? The subconscious mind, the judgmentals, and the anxieties, how do we play that? Well, I think uh, this is all about how to maintain your positive attitude, no? how to maintain your positivity. So there are two things. One is, there's a saying that no one can take away your positive attitude unless you let them do it. That is, they can't by force take your positivity out of you. So the, the first part of the question is that how to uh, prevent these toxic influences getting into you. So I, I, I would say you have a very thick skull that the, 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 whatever the things which comes just bounces off or from this year and goes out this year. Now that's so, very hard for us. <laughs> so <laughs> exactly, right? So the, the again, uh, what I learned from this book is uh, to have having things in perspective because uh, I think you'd have seen this uh, meme going around uh, social media saying that, okay, uh, if you have a bed to sleep, if you have clothes, if you have a roof above your head, you are uh, more fortunate than 75% of, of, of million people in the world. So like, I mean, when we get into the, the problem, we don't put it in context. So our problem, it might be a small one, but it's huge. So uh, when you put things in perspective, I think uh, that also we will come with a lot of mind, mind training. I think uh, with a lot of mindfulness and a lot of uh, maybe a little bit of meditation, breathing. So you can make your, make your uh, skin a thicker uh, to all these influences. The second side of the attitude, the equation is it won't last forever. So you might start the day with a big positive attitude, but with all the problems coming, uh, people coming, all these things, it will go for a six. Then the, the principle is you have to have your, your solutions to keep the, the candle burning, to keep that uh, attitude going. As you said, uh, go for a walk, take the dog for a walk and you enjoy the environment, you bring, get this positivity. Then you speak to your loved ones, midday, yes, you add some positivity. So on the one hand, you have a thick skull to not allow this negativity to come in. Second one is to have your small routines. It could be your yoga, as you said, it could be your exercise, it could be your time you, now these days uh, we have uh, uh, fixed time, maybe nine to 10, all of us sit together and do some board games. So that will give the, the, the positivity. So it's, it's, a, it's a matter of constantly putting something positive inside as well. And uh, reanalyzing ourselves in how we approach, isn't it? Correct, yes. Um, yes. Shailu, do you have any uh, thoughts there? Would you like to uh, share some insights there to that uh, question? Uh, yes, Sharon. Um, Toxic see, people? Yes, I will... Do we, do we give a big shout out to them? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Can we give a big shout out to all the toxic people? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See, I will give you a real life example. Okay. So there's something which I, I always say. I learn a lot of things from my wife. Okay. Yeah, I'm not I think that's it, the best decision you ever took. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it just to flatter her. It's like, I'll just give you a, a small example. She is a person who does not like to argue. Mm. Say basically, even if I want to argue, it just stops in a sentence or two. Why? Because she she feels 
that that person is doing what is right for them what they think that is right and i am doing what is thing that is what i am what i think that is right right so even if i am going for an argument she says you you let's talk later because you are thinking you are saying what is right for you i am thinking what is right for me so this is not the best time to talk so the best thing is i have seen her literally talking to people when they are negative she hangs up the call right she so i i learned a lot of things and i also get so many calls and this the covid time is the best time where even men gossip i mean there are good gossips and bad gossips right we get into this because it's so much of free time we can talk about the government we can talk about the family we can talk about the children what not it's all rubbish right but there are even i also fail into that trap but sometimes when you're conscious when you want to really do well it actually helps you it actually reminds you you're going out of the track you're going out of the track your subconscious is an amazing tool right the moment you say that okay you can talk something you can talk something positive and then cut that call off as you said talk about your schedule talk about what you are doing right so that your positivity will be shared with someone else into, in, into them so yes. that's that's so sometimes that's the best thing we can do and i uh, sorry over to you sharan i was yeah. thinking about the question so that's all right uh, my question to you on uh, regards to the book because we are also sharing good insights on real values and also yeah. how to be very positive uh, which would unleash your potential which is our topic for today um what would you say uh, when it comes to the fact that in this corporate or personal environment how do we embrace ourselves how do we prepare ourselves for this yes see it's a it's a lovely question see i would ask all viewers and attendees to read this book because it gives so much of insight in both areas right when you take this book and when you read it it looks as if you know it's just a you know just something for a normal person not for a corporate person this book will really help a corporate person to a very very uh, amazing level because you every day they meet so many types of people they meet good bosses they meet bad bosses they meet good good colleagues bad colleagues when i say good and bad i'm not being judgmental it's how they affect your emotion right if and the, you and you need these people to move yes, on with that struggle isn't exactly it? exactly how they affect your life if somebody is irritating you well that's the place you you can really work with right you know what my wife used to say if that if that person is irritating you it's not that person's problem it's your problem problem right because i need how to work on my emotion yeah. i need to change my perspective the moment i per- change my perspective i look inside of me that light that the warrior is the author is talking about when i look at my light and i act upon that light even if it's your personal life or your corporate life you are going to have a a beautiful lifestyle it's not it's going to be challenging you will have your set of issues but the way you react it will be amazing people will start looking up to you people will say how do you do that how do you do this how do you do that so that's that's how amazing this book is and uh, that's that's what it that's what it's all about uh, sharan so it it it, is, it does not say it's for personal people or family men or a corporate but it, it's from even from the ceo even for the for domestic this book will help because everybody is a warrior of light you are a warrior of light i am a warrior of light how i perceive you and how you perceive me is oh, it's it's all about that and it's not only for a covid patient or during covid times as well it's going to be a book that uh, yeah. sounds very amazing um i'm going to move on to um malcolm gladwell's um probably the last question so priming seems to be uh rather powerful but how does priming work when it comes to judging or making a decision zainab now uh, priming as i said it's really powerful it's uh, again i just like to repeat that priming is what you put inside your brains all the time and keeps getting locked up and it comes out indirectly when the situation arises now uh experiments have proven uh, that if you uh, if you ask somebody to be a professor they automatically become smarter they act smarter 
Uh, there's a very interesting experiment that I would like to share over here just for better understanding uh, about how important priming is that uh, uh, one study was done, a group of students from New York. The New Yorkers, they're fast, they're quick, they have very little time for anybody else. They need to keep going all the time. So what they were done is they were divided into two groups. The first group was primed with words like patient, wait, soft, uh, by prime, I mean, they were not shown the, those words per se, but they were given a paragraph where these words are, you know, somewhere inside. Uh, the second set of students were given were primed with words like fast, quick, anger, frustration. So they were given a paragraph where these words were hidden inside. The two groups of students, one were primed with patient words, one were primed with uh, fast or no time words. Uh, they were. Uh, they were told that you read this paragraph with the prime words. Then down the corridor, there's a professor. Uh, he will give you one very important experiment. You're supposed to do the experiment. Now, what the professor did was he acted like he was very busy. He called a fake student inside, and the fake student was supposed to keep asking him questions. And the students who were primed were supposed to stand outside. The only thing the professor wanted to check was uh, those who are primed with polite words, are they patient? Are they standing outside? And those who are primed with words that meant anger or fast, or uh, did they interrupt the professor in between? Uh, before the experiment, when the professor went to take permission, he was told by the authorities that you will uh, uh, not, uh, you know, don't make them long because they're New York or they won't have time. If they interrupt you, you have to give them an answer. But what the professor found was those who are primed with negative words, they interrupted him in 10 minutes. Those who are primed with positive words never interrupted at all. The, uh, the professor was like, after the I got tired of the fake student. The fake student and I were having a discussion. We were waiting for that student to come in and disturb, but they never came. Such was the effect. So that's why, you know, when you go to certain offices, there are motivational quotes everywhere. Because what you read, your subconscious mind keeps on storing. So even when you have a negative moment, that you know that uh, that quote that you read comes back to you. No, I need to be positive. I need to make a better decision. Again, in the book, uh, the author talks about African Americans. He said that if you want to be more uh, compassionate towards them, uh, more accepting towards them, not judge them. You need to sit with them, stand with them. You need to have new exp experiences with them. And in all those experiences, you need to have a positive outlook to it. That's how you change. Because you're primed all the time, whether you like it or not. But you, if you want to change your priming, if you want to make better decisions, you make sure you go to new uncomfortable situations and you be positive over there. So that's how you change. Now, uh, there's another very famous uh, experiment about the jailer experiment. Uh, I think a lot of people must be knowing. It was a very controversial experiment where uh, certain people were asked to behave as jailers uh, and certain people were asked to behave as inmates. It was found that those who were asked to be jailers, they were not uncomfortable inflicting physical harm on the inmates, whereas in real life, they wouldn't even think about doing this. But they were primed. They were told that you are the jailer. You have authority. The inmates need to be controlled. That had such an effect on them that as days passed, they became, they, they, they were, you know, freely inflicting physical harm. Such was the effect of priming. Uh, so when you're primed, you become prejudiced, you become stereotypical. And if you want to come out of priming, if you want to make a better decision, uh, you're making decisions all the time. All the time. Every second is a decision. Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I meet that person? Should I tell hi over there? Should I pick up this call? It's all a decision. So when you want to make quick decisions, uh, that are uh, that are favorable to you, that are beneficial to you, you make sure that all the time you're primed with the right things, with the correct information, you have the correct group of friends, you're reading the right books. That's one way that you can become less prejudiced and make better informed decisions, better informed quick decisions. You're on mute, Sharon. I think these books are very important to be given as birthday gifts, <laughs> probably uh, to restart, uh, start fresh, 
it's a new year and this is how you can look at a positive way. Uh, Dr. Prabhat, probably the last question. Confidence is invariably related to the outlook that you have in life. Um, how does this work in terms of a relationship? Well, uh, very simply, uh, your outlook determines your future. That's a fact. Now, uh, so the, the, the principle behind this is uh, what, what we call the self-fulfilling prophecy. That is, if you start off thinking that this is going to be the outcome, you will have that outcome. So the, the, this was an experiment done in the 50s where they, they took a bunch of kids, randomly divided them into two classes and gave them to two teachers and told the teachers, this group, they are notorious, they are the worst kids, you can't do anything, just try to do something. The other set were told that these are the best students, studious, uh, very obedient, you have to, treat, you have to uh, teach them well. But they were randomly selected. Then at the end of the year, they found that the teacher, the class who was told that they were the bad kids, actually performed worse. And the kids who were told that they were the good kids actually uh, uh, performed better. So your outlook, how you look at things, how you uh, see that situation, because all of us have, like, I would say even this lockdown more or less has created this almost the same situation for all of us, most of us. But as Shelu said, uh, someone who, who, who has taken it positively, he has started a new venture and gone into a new business. Whereas someone else would have taken it, okay, this is the end of the world, we are going to be uh, at home for two months, no job, no income, what to do? So it is uh, not only with relationships, anything. Uh, if you want to build confidence and be successful, you have to get hold of that uh, your, your your circumstances and have a very strong internal locus of control. I am in control. Not let others, other forces or situation or your planets or whatever influence your life. It is you. So when you have that strong internal locus of control, yes, uh, you can achieve miracles. Uh, thank you, doctor. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I think I missed out on one question, and that was um, probably Bisa's question. What's your advice for someone who finds it very hard to make a decision that is beneficial for him or her in the future? Any uh, penalized can, oh, sorry, any panelists can answer this. Uh, I think the only decision that I have right at the moment, whether to get married or not, uh, but I'm going to just leave it at, leave that there, but uh, I'm going to leave it to the panelists to give us a good insight on this one. Uh, Shelu? Yeah, uh, see, that's a very good question. That's a question relevant to anybody, now that you also have that same type of question. <laughs> see, when you have that question, whether am I making the right or the wrong decision? There it's a, it shows that you're giving room for your thoughts. Because when you get that confusion, it's, it's, the, it's the information that you get from outside. Some people, friends must be talking, a media must be talking, something that you saw somewhere, some experiences that went through life. It's giving you all the information and it's confusing you, right? The, as we said earlier, even Zainab and Dr. Prabhat, both in their books, it says, just let go. There is no right decision or a wrong decision. The moment you let go, the universe will take care of it. Just go with, go with what you really want. What, what you really want. Your heart will always say, I have, I believe for the past so many years, I have been telling people whom I know, the moment you have a question, you ask it, you ask, the universe will always give you an answer. That's guaranteed, right? So that uh, Bisa, I, I would like to tell, tell that, per, tell that uh, uh, person, uh, the best, as an action plan, maybe they can just start meditating. There are so many meditation uh, helping videos on YouTube, right? There are, you can say, just to relax yourself, just to relax. You don't have to even worry about making a decision. Just let the meditation guide you. Go, universe will guide you, and you will automatically you will let you will be led to do the right decision. Read this book. 
it will give you a lot of answers. Start with the book and the meditation, you will, you will hit it. And uh, there is one more question. There's an opinion from the section of people that currently the world is in an absurd mode. I think I'm with you on that. Uh, the absurdity could uh, could of one's perception, yes, but then living in the midst in a challenge which thrust upon you took for opportunities or ideas, um, uh, putting it out to the entire panelists. Dr. Prabhat, would you like to comment on that? Yes, actually, uh, when I saw the question, I was very happy that uh, this kind of a question has uh, come up. Now, uh, can you uh, change someone else? Very simple question. Can you change your children? Can you change your husband or wife? The basic question is you can't. You, you can change yourself so that the other person sees the change in you and maybe change accordingly. And another thing is you can't motivate someone else. Only self-motivation is there. You can create the environment for the person to get motivated. So the, the question for that is, you can't control the world. You can't control what is happening. Only thing in the entire universe you have full control is yourself. So dig deep and look at yourself. As uh, Shelly said, okay, look for the options. I mean, if you really look into yourself and look, look at your strengths and look at your competencies, there'll be a million things that you can do, which you have not even thought of yet. So forget about the absurdity, forget about uh, what Donald Trump is doing in the US, forget about all those things and <laughs> focus on, on the only thing you have control, which is you. That is my advice to this question. Right. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Prabhat, also to Shelu as, as well as to Zainab uh, for bringing us three fantastic books and also for sharing us good insights about the book. I'm sure a lot of them will buy the book and those who want to know more information will be in touch with you again to get more insights on the book as well. Uh, we'd like to thank all our viewers for joining. Uh, so pick a book is to encourage the reading habit and getting all the participants to select a book, read, research, and also to share a quick summary, to share some good insights so that we can uh, connect with the rest of the world, share communication, and also bring the community together um, just to inculcate good knowledge and also help people uh, for the habit of reading. Uh, to all the participants, uh, sorry, the panelists, thank you very much once again. I certainly hope you'll stay positive, confident, and also bring good energy to all the people out there. And uh, while we also thank all our attendees uh, for joining us for this fantastic webinar session, um, I think to unleash your potential, you need to identify your true potential and be positive, set goals, achieve them, and also never give up in whatever you want to do because there is a... Uh, a light that's under the tunnel that will ever, ever bring you a positive energy. So while we thank all of you for joining us here today, we certainly hope you'll have a good dinner here in Sri Lanka. It's dinner time now. And we certainly hope we see you next time at our webinar session. Have yourself a wonderful evening. Good night. Ta-da! See you all. Uh, nice meeting you, Shad. See you. Nice meeting you too. See you. Take Thanks care. a lot. You too. Bye. Bye, Bye Dr. Bye, Shilu. Bye. Bye-bye.